Example 1. Find in ascending powers of x the first four terms in the expansion of 1 plus 3x raised to the power of 6 and 1 minus 4x raised to the power of 5. So let's get started and let's see how are we going to do this. Now for some of you who may not be familiar still with the binomial expansion, I will encourage you to open up a textbook uh, and turn to the page whereby you can see the formula okay so that you can follow better so in this case uh, very simple right this is our a so 1 is the first term 3x is the second term so uh, like we mentioned earlier on the first term will take the full power and therefore it's 1 to the power of 6 isn't it okay and of course uh, the next thing will be 6c1 okay and of course 1 will reduce power by 1 so now 1 will be raised to the power of 5 and of course uh, 3x now we gain 1 power okay and of course this is the second term and this is the third term okay the third term will be have 1 raised to the power of 4 and 3x raised to the power of 2 and of course the last one okay and uh, 6c3 alright which have 1 raised to the power of 3 and 3x raised to the power of 3 okay and we have uh, we actually have some more terms behind okay is the own uh, the only thing is that well, we, we are not really concerned because when you're concerned with the first four terms right as uh, you may have uh, noticed already if the power is 5 um, when fully expanded there should be seven terms okay so we're not going to do all seven terms we only want the first four right so what left to do next is of course to simplify uh, whatever that we have here we have expanded here okay so 1 to the power of 6 is obviously 1 because 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1 you always get 1 no matter what is the power isn't it so from the calculator alright 6c1 is 6 so 6 multiplied by 3 and that will give us an 18 18x okay of course again 1 to the power of 5 is 1 right so um, I hope sooner or later you will start to realize that 6c1 is 6 um, 7c1 is 7, 8c1 is 8, and so on and so forth, right? 1 million c1 is also 1 million. Okay, so um, actually the first two terms are actually very easy to work out. Okay, so for the third term, now 62, right, you really have to use a calculator on this because, um, you know, it may not be so uh, easy for you to calculate this mentally. So from the calculator, 6 c 2 is a 15 15 multiplied by 3 square which is 9 right so 15 multiplied by 9 and that will give us 135 so this will be 135 x square okay again the 1 is as good as not being there at all right so let us proceed on to the next term 6 c3 alright so from your calculator 6 c3 is 20 so 20 and of course 3 cubed is 27 so 27 multiplied by 20 that will give us 540 x cubed alright of course and you have a dot 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 behind to represent that there are actually more terms behind alright so this is our expansion okay we have uh, already answered the first uh, part of the question the first four terms alright next let us move on to the next part, the second part, alright, to expand um, 1 minus 4x raised to the power of 5. Okay, so again, now this will be our first term, this will be our second term. Okay, now take note of the negative, alright, because now our second term is negative 4x, okay, including the negative, alright. So, um, this is the second time we're doing the expansion, so I hope I can do a little bit faster. So the first term, which is 1, 1 raised to the power of 5, because 1 will have a full power, isn't it? So, 1 raised to the power of 5 is 1, okay? Then, of course, plus and 5c1, isn't it? So, 5c1, as we mentioned earlier on, 5c1 should be 5, okay? And, of course, 1 will have uh, now power, uh, of course, 1 to the power of 4, isn't it? Okay, but what I hope is that of course you must know that 1 to the power of 4 is 1 and therefore it doesn't really make a difference whether we write the 1 to the power of 4 here or not, right? So uh, we can just leave it blank to simplify things a little so we can do it actually faster. So the second term now, alright, which is our minus 4x, okay, will be raised to the power of 1. So, you know, this is what we have. Okay, next term of course now is a 5c2, 
Okay, again the 1 we can simply ignore and it will be just negative 4x raised to the power of 2. And of course the fourth term which is 5c3. Okay, and now um, this second term will be raised to the power of 3. And of course plus dot 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 because we know that we have actually two more. Okay, two more terms at the back, but we don't have to care because we only want the first four terms, right? So let us now just simplify this, alright? Of course, we have to do it with the help of a, uh, a calculator. So 5 multiplied by negative 4, alright? That will give us a negative 20, negative 20x, okay? So next, alright, we'll use our calculator to calculate 5c2. So from the calculator, 5c2 should give you 10, right? So 10, here we have a negative 4 square and that will give us a positive 16. So 16 multiplied by 10, of course everybody knows what's that. Alright, so there will be 160 x square. Alright, so lastly, from our calculator again, 5c3 is also 10 and um, 4 to the power of 3 is 64. Alright, but because it's negative, so negative 4 raised to the power of 3 is negative 64. So that will give us a negative 64 multiplied by 10, and that will give us 640 x cubed. Okay, so again, this is our answer for the second part. Okay, we basically have an uh, answer, the first and the second part. Alright, so this is basically how you do your binomial expansion. Alright, um do try to you know expand a couple on your own right um just try some questions on your own uh, to see if you can get the answer this is very very important that you're able to do this um this first step of your binomial expansion right how to expand it right next we move on to hence find the coefficient of x cubed in the expansion of um this hey hey wait a minute this isn't this expansion what we just did in part one and this expansion what we just did in part two all right so what so what we're going to do now is simply take this expansion multiplied by this expansion now what is it trying to say is simply to say that well because we know that this expansion is as good as writing this sum of polynomials and this expansion is as good as writing this sum right so when we're going to multiply this expansion to this expansion we're simply going to multiply this to this Okay, so let us uh, just do it now because it's a hence part. All right, hence simply means you have to use the above result. You have to use the answers that we have gotten earlier on. So in this case, it simply means that uh, the answer that we got earlier on is our expansion itself. Right. So let us just um, copy it down very very quickly. All right. Now we can forget about the dot 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 behind because now we're interested in is only in the x cubed term. Right, so when we have this expansion multiplied with this expansion, what it means is that well this entire expansion multiplied with this entire expansion. Now but what we are interested in is not the entire product. We are only interested in the term with x cubed. Alright? Now how are we gonna get x cubed up of here? Well, this is how. Okay, now take a look at this. Right, this one, when multiplied by this x cube, will give us an x cube. When this x multiplied by this x square, will give us an x cube as well. And this x square, one three five x square multiplied by x, will give us an x cube. And of course, this five hundred forty x cube multiplied by this one, will give us another x cube. So as you can see, uh, we have a couple of x cubes around. Okay, now are we missing out any? And how do we know there are only these x cubes, right? So this is when you have to really understand what's going on. All right, now take a look at this expansion that we have earlier on. Right now it is in ascending power of x, which simply means that the power of x will keep increasing. It makes sense anyway, isn't it? Because you realize that the 3x is the second term, and as the term goes on, the 3x will just gain in power, okay? Gains the power, gets higher and higher. So the next term, of course, will be x to the power of 4, right? Likewise for this, the next term will be x to the power of 4 term, right? So of course, we're not interested in x to the power of 4, 
right? And therefore, we only stop at x to the power of 3, and uh, yeah, we can be quite certain that that's all the x cubed that we all have. Alright, so let us just work it out now. So 1 multiplied by negative 640 will give us a negative 640 x cubed. Alright, and of course we have 18 multiplied by 160 which will give us a positive 2880 x cubed. Okay, next we have 135 multiplied by negative 20 which will give us a negative 2000 700 x cubed. Right, lastly, we have our 540 multiplied by 1, which will give us a positive 540 x cubed. Okay, so when we sum it up, we will have 80 x cubed. Okay, so th in this expansion, there's only one x cubed term and the x cubed term is an 80 x cubed. So the coefficient, now uh, bear in mind, uh, the question asks us to find the coefficient. So please do not write your answer as 80 x cubed, okay? So the answer should be simply 80. Okay? So this is the answer for this example.